Hey guys, we're back. This time we're going to be taking a look at the expansion tanks for World of Tanks miniatures game. This is the first of the Wave 1 tanks. This time around it is the M3 Lee. And I like the packaging on these because you can look at the tank from every angle. Sorry about the glares, but they did a cool job on those. And they got a listing on the back of everything that's in there. Pretty nice stuff. Anyway, we're going to get in and take a look. So on the little sleeve that's in the back here, there's a uh, little thing on how to activate your codes, and mine are torn off right here, but on the bottom, there's an actual codes here, and these can be used, the top one there is for a um, new accounts, the bottom one is for existing accounts, which is why I'm covering that one up. The top one's actually the same on all of them. So if you're new watching these videos and you're interested in playing the video game, you can enter that code in to make a new account and you get a free premium tank, an extra garage slot, a uh, 7 day premium account, and 500 gold to spend on things. So pretty cool for new players. The bottom one gets you a, a day of premium on your account, a repair kit, some combat rations, I think, and that might be it for those. But um, those are their one-time use, the top one anybody can use, so... Check that out if you're new to the game. And if you aren't new to the game, you can get those codes. They come with every one of the expansion tanks. So the first thing we have here is our vehicle card. And these are super high gloss. And they're quite large. They're quite a bit bigger than a normal um, card. Almost double the size, I would say. So finding sleeves for these is kind of weird but uh, I think some people out there have found them but up here we have the M3 Lee it's listed as an assault gun but we'll get to that because it has both on the vehicle it's a tier 4 medium tank 33 points you got 4 attack 1 defense 2 mobility 4 initiative 4 hit points down here and then you have a commander 2 gunners, a driver, a radio operator, and a loader. So you got a full crew set there to work with. So you can add all sorts of upgrades to that. On the back, there's a little, um, as always with these, there's a little uh, background history on the tank. As well as the uh, rules for being a medium tank, which all the ones in the starter set were. It allows you to re-roll a blank. Over here we have our assault gun rule which it has a restricted line of fire and uh, same to any uh, tank destroyer which uh, is in the main rule book we'll get to that too I didn't actually have the Lee in the old game so I can't compare uh, what the stats are if there's any differences between them two but overall I think it's decent next we have our upgrades and as you can see we have one upgrade here that is a uh, must show and these ones when you put your upgrades normally you put them face down the ones with the light bulb have to be face up because they cosmetically change the tank basically in this case it is the 37 millimeter gun and basically it's allowing you to use the turret on the top instead of the main cannon so in this case when attacking you do one less attack but you get to ignore the assault gun rule because you're using that turret on top so that's a pretty good and cool upgrade for two points. Next we have Adrenaline Rush, which is a loader upgrade. And while you're in the red on your hit points, you get plus one attack. So on our hit point bar there, you can see they go from green to red. When you're in that red zone, you gain extra damage, basically. And it's only a one point upgrade, but you have to be in that red zone, which is your last uh, hull point. So it's kind of situational at best. Next we have Deadeye. And Deadeye is a gunner upgrade for five points. You can draw two critical cards for the first critical hit scored by this tank each turn. The shooting player just chooses which one of these to apply and discards the other. So it lets you draw two um, crits and figure out which one's more advantageous to you. So you don't accidentally get that zero damage thing. That always sucks. Next we have a Cyclone Filter, which is an equipment upgrade. For three points and this one gives you plus one initiative during the movement phase and you can re-roll a failed repair roll when repairing the engine fire critical card always nice 
And then finally we have Nathaniel Campbell here, who is a unique crewman, he's a commander, and can only be used on American tanks. Costs six points, gives you a additional attempt to repair each turn, and six cents, which at the start of your shooting phase allows you to roll a die, and on a hit or crit, the tank may make a single move, and it does not uh, count towards your movement for the turn. So that's kind of cool. Reminds me of the old Blitzkrieg thing, kind of. That's it for the cards. Then we move on to the tank itself. And again, I didn't have the original model to compare this to, but with all the other ones, it's better assembled than I can do. There's a pretty good gap right here, though, which kind of sucks. But it's right where the plating meets, so it might supposed to be there. But I suck at putting tanks together anyway. But uh, the... Assault gun does have a little bit of articulation, but it's supposed to only fire forward anyway. And then your turret up here has a full rotating turret. As for the assault gun rule, I said I was going to go over it real quick. Basically, basically when you use the assault gun, you have your tank here. Your line of fire is anything in front of you. So anything in front of your vehicle from here forward is in your fire arc. However, if anything is behind that line, in the instance you have a tank like this, or we'll say over here, he's slightly behind that line. If they're behind that line, they have to be within direct in front of your tank. So in this case, you could not shoot at him. But if he was here, you could shoot at him. But anything as long as it's completely in front of that line, like here, you could still shoot at. Back here, well, that's off camera, but back here. Any of these you could shoot at, but as long as you get part of that tank behind that line, he would not be able to shoot unless part of it is also inside those lines. It's a little complicated if you're not familiar with the rule set. It's not explained greatly in the rules, but uh, that's how the assault guns work. Which uh, makes them kind of interesting. They just don't have that 360 degree like a normal tank would. And this does if you buy that upgrade and you're using the upper turret here. So keep that in mind. Overall, I think the Lee is a good medium tank. It's an assault gun at the same time. It's hard, it's hard to place this one because for the two point upgrade, you're getting both a tank destroyer and a normal medium tank. So you can use it uh, whatever the situation arises. I think it's a good addition to the basic Shermans. The assault gun gives you a little bit more um, versatility with it and uh, gives the Americans their first option as a tank destroyer. There isn't a lot to choose from in the game right now, so it's, it's well worth adding to your uh, American faction just to have. This is also assuming you're playing faction pure, which we kind of always do. You can mix game uh, mix factions in the new game, so that's worth keeping in mind too. And as far as all around goes, though, the Lee is definitely an average tank. The amount of crew selection you get in there can allow you to really load this thing with upgrades and do some interesting things with it, though. So keep that in mind. That's going to wrap it up for our look at the M3 Lee or World of Tanks miniatures game. As always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.